If there is a star in the movie Burnt Offerings, it's not Betty Davis, Burgess, Meredith, Eileen Heckert, or Karen Black, who are in the cast. It's a haunted house. This is Cinema Sound, and I'm Bob Lee with a film review that seeks to uncover the human and social values in a current motion picture. Burnt Offerings. The title is as mysterious as the plot, for it really relates to nothing in the movie. What is in the movie is a weird old house that Karen Black and Oliver Reed and their young son, Lee Montgomery, rent for the summer season. The old house is completely furnished, not only with furniture and food, but also with a recluse grandmother who occupies an attic apartment. Burgess Meredith and Eileen Heckert are brother and sister who rent the house and then take off for the rest of the picture. As they leave, Betty Davis joins the family for the summer vacation. She is the family's beloved Aunt Elizabeth. It doesn't take us long into the story to realize that something is wrong. Either the house is haunted, or its new inhabitants have themselves been haunted by old and new demons or evil spirits. But because the mother in the family, Karen Black, is the first one to act strangely, we are supposed to conclude that the supernatural tricks that occur have something to do with her spending time up in the attic where the grandmother lives as a virtual hermit. No one sees the old woman, a tray of food is set out for her at each meal, and we assume she is eating it until we become aware that for some unexplained reason, Karen Black herself is consuming the snacks she has carried up. There is some supernatural power manifesting itself in the other members of the family whenever Karen Black fondles an antique music box that is on a table with dozens of family pictures. At one point, Oliver Reed, as the father, is having some swimming fun and games with his son in the pool and suddenly becomes possessed to the point of almost drowning the boy. Later, he has visions of childhood, recalling his mother's funeral and his fear of the driver of the hearse, who still seems to be pursuing him. Betty Davis also becomes the victim of a strange malady that no one can explain. She pulls out all the theatrical stops to give us a horribly frightening death scene. The climax of Miss Davis's performance is related to the same hallucinations from Reed's childhood about the hearse driver. The audience gasps and screams as this ghoulish character out of a bad dream delivers Aunt Elizabeth's coffin right to her room as she dies. It's that kind of film. A lot of scary action that is never explained by prepared motivation of characters or by a satisfactory follow-up. Things happen more for the sake of scaring the audience than to advance the story or development of character. We never know before, during, or after the movie why all this action takes place so strangely. Maybe one doesn't need to explain happenings in a haunted house. But the classic prototype for this kind of horror tale where the house is both setting and character is Edgar Allan Poe's The Fall of the House of Usher. In that one, too, the spooky place played tricks on its inhabitants and supernatural forces were at work. Also in Poe's story, the house itself became the symbol of a whole family as it shuddered to death in its own decay and disintegration just before collapse. The movie Burnt Offerings will never match the artistic greatness of Poe's horror story. It's too gimmicky, it's too coincidental, and particularly at the end, its violence and ugly gore are much too gratuitous. Shock is exploited for its schlock value. Director Dan Curtis became a movie horror specialist when he hyped up a TV soap opera a decade ago by injecting it with spine-tingling ghosts, vampires, and other spooky tricks to prevent cancellation. It worked. With burnt offerings, it may work for the front office or the box office, but unless you want a scare for the sake of a scare alone, you may find the house and the story about it not haunted, but merely empty. For Cinema Sound, this is Bob Lee. Cinema Sound is brought to you by the National Council of Churches for the Lutheran Council and the Episcopal Church.